Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the presentation of our work, A Light Recipe to Trade Robust Vision Transformers. I am Eduardo de Benedetti. I'm a PhD student at ETH Zurich, even though I did most of this work as a master's student at EPFL. This is joint work with Vikas Sevag and Pratik Mittal of Princeton University. As many of you may already know, machine learning models are vulnerable to the so-called adversarial examples that are images that are uh, initially classified correctly, like this one uh, of a castle, to which we add a crafted perturbation um, uh, that is usually considered as imperceptible uh, so that the model misclassifies the image. So for instance, in this case, the image of the castle is misclassified as a B. We usually, um, again, consider the perturbation to be imperceptible, and we measure this imperceptibility uh, mainly using some LP norms, usually L2 or L infinity. Now, this can be potentially a problem in uh, security sensitive applications. For this reason, the research community have, has developed several uh, solutions. One of them is adversarial training. Adversarial training from a work by Madri et al. from 2017 consists basically of training on adversarial examples instead of clean data. So at every iterations, we take the data and instead of feeding the, these data directly to, to the model, we, we first find an adversarial example. So we find an adversarial perturbation, we add it to our original image and feed it to the model. And then we update the model using our usual machine learning techniques, such as for instance, SGD. And then we do this a second time, we generate a new um, adversarial examples given the training data at second epoch and so on and so forth until we reach the final the final trained model where we find a final um, when, when we continue finding a perturbation uh, until our model is trained and the training has converged. This is theoretically principled and effective in practice and indeed most of the defenses that have been developed um, so far after adversarial training are still based on this uh, on this principle of training on adversarial examples. On the other hand, uh, we have seen that uh, recently, since 2020, a new family of computer vision architectures has become very popular. This family, called Visual Transformers, uses an architecture that is borrowed from uh, natural language processing. And as we can see from this data from uh, papers with code, um, out of the top 10 models, before, uh, out of the models um, that that the has the strongest performance on ImageNet top one accuracy, nine of them are either, we, as we can see, are either transformers or are a hybrid of convolution neural networks and transformers. So this is quite significant because it means that um, the research, the computer vision community um, has uh, put a lot of effort and a lot of focus on visual transformers. And indeed they have, they are very competitive at SANA training. And, and this is what you observe, for instance, when you compare it, uh, when we compare a, um, a visual transformer um, called a type of visual transformer called Excite S with Resident 50 uh, that is comparable in size and parameters. And indeed, in standard training, we can see that it does significantly better uh, than Resident 50. However, is it is our visual transformers good at, at adversarial training? And, and we can see that if we simply take the uh, canonical recipe, meaning the, the recipe that is usually used for SANA training, and we simply uh, train, uh, do adversarial training on the model using this recipe, well, then it looks like vision transformers are not really that good. Uh, however, this is quite unexpected because on SANA training, the performance is significantly better. And so what we do in this work is trying to understand uh, how to make visual transformers competitive at adversarial training. And we see that it's possible. However, we need to find a custom adversarial training recipe. Um, moreover, we see that we, we test this recipe on larger variants of, of the models we, we find recipe for, and even to other architectures and also another threat model. Um, and finally, we, um, we also investigate one potential reason of why the recipe is so important. And we will see that it has to do with how adversarial training works. Starting from the first point, um, we, as we observed, if we use the starter uh, training recipe, which we call canonical recipe, it looks like visual transformers don't really do very well at adversarial training. Um, and so we do um, a thorough ablation uh, using several uh, parameters uh, of training to make uh, to train models that are adversarially trained on ImageNet using one step of the one step of GSM attack 
to make models robust to L infinity perturbations with epsilon 4 over 255, which is quite a standard setup for ImageNet. And we start from the standard training setup of the of DAT, which is a type of transformer very similar to the original uh, visual transformers. Um, and, and we do this because this setup is uh, de facto used by all the subsequent work in visual transformers and not only in general in computer vision architectures. And we search for the optimal parameters in terms of architecture of the budget of uh, we of the we also try warming up the tax strength, meaning that we increase the epsilon in the first few epochs. We also try several 16 different combinations of data augmentation, of strong data augmentation techniques, and we also try several values of weight decay. And we evaluate all these, um, and we evaluate our results using Odata, which is the de facto standard to um, evaluate uh, the robustness of models. And, and we can see that uh, with our recipe, we can indeed uh, bring a significant improvement. We, with the improvement is 13, more, more than the, is, is more than 13 percent uh, points in absolute terms, which uh, compared to the original adversarial robustness, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the robust accuracy of, um, of our model, uh, of the original model uh, was 28.70, it's almost 50 percent relative to this quantity. And it's also interesting to observe that the largest contribution in this improvement is given by tuned data augmentation um, that brings uh, an improvement of uh, more than 9 percent and what's really interesting is that the tune data augmentation is no heavy data augmentation at all, and that's the reason why we call uh, we call this a light uh, training recipe, and uh, and we we end up only using lightweight data augmentation such as random random cropping and random flipping, um, and so as as how as as a general takeaway, we think that. When, when when trying new architectures for adversarial training, researchers should should uh, pay particular attention uh, to the training recipe because the recipe used for standard training could bring suboptimal results. As a next step, we also investigated uh, how well our recipe does on larger variants of these architectures. So, so far we have focused on Excite-S and now we will see how it performs on other larger variants such as Excite-M and Excite-L. We already see that in this plot where we have clean accuracy versus robust accuracy and we can see that, in, uh, yeah, we can see that the larger, a larger circle represents a larger model in terms of uh, parameters and flops. We can already see that Excite S12 already, despite being smaller than that, than what rests at 52 from Salman at all, um, is already quite better in both in terms of both clean accuracy and robust accuracy. Uh, but we can see that using the very same recipe, also Excite M12 does quite better, uh, does even better, despite C still being smaller than what rests than what rests at 52. Um, and then moving on to different architectures, we try a wide range of architectures. So we, we we still report the results for Excite S, for Excite S, but we also try DATS, which is again uh, extremely similar to the original Vision Transformer architecture. We try also ConvNext, uh, that is not even actually a transformer. It, it's a it's a CNN which borrows some components from transformers, and we also try Pullformer M12, which is um, a more lightweight version of transformers. And and we can see that in all these cases. Um, our, our our recipe brings uh, significant improvements, both in terms of clean accuracy and robust accuracy. And it's also interesting to see that if we use the or canonical recipe for ConvNext, um, the model, the training, the, the, the training procedure doesn't even converge, and the final model has a clean accuracy of almost zero percent accuracy. Uh, while using our training recipe, ConvNext ends up being the best model overall. And uh, and as a, as an extra bonus, we also tried our uh, recipe on uh, and the L2 threat model, and we see that our recipe brings improvements also there. Um, and so yeah, we have seen that our recipe uh, also works for other architectures and variants. And as a final step, uh, we are intrigued by these uh, by these but by the fact that the recipe can really change a lot the results of of the training and we try to investigate why and this has to do with how adversarial training works so we have seen before that we have two loops in adversarial training one has to do with uh, finding adversarial examples and the other one has to do with the more standard training now the standard training part is is already well studied um, and and so we focus more on the finding adversarial examples part and and we do so by 
First of all, by arguing that during training, we want to find strong adversarial examples so that um, so that, that maximize the loss of the model with few attack steps. Uh, because in practice, we usually use uh, at most 10 attack steps so with uh, high resolution data sets. We usually use even just one attack step. And we want our, our training procedure to allow us to find very strong adversarial examples, even though this might sound counterintuitive. Uh, however, when we will be at test time, we will validate our model with a very strong attack, like for instance, OAT attack. So if the model will have seen already strong and uh, powerful are our examples, that means that it's going to be more robust to them once we are going to, uh, to test it with a stronger attack. Now, this has been already studied in our work by Xie et al. Uh, in 2020 in terms of architectural uh, components. So for instance, uh, they, they tested several activation functions, um, but this hasn't been studied yet in terms of uh, training recipe. And so uh, we, we measure the how easy it is to find adversarial examples by measuring the, re the relative difference in loss uh, between the loss given by adversarial examples found with a PGD with K steps and the loss given by adversarial examples found with an Oracle attack, which is in this case PGD 200, which we consider to be a strong enough attack. And of course, we want this relative difference to be small enough because that would mean that with just K steps, we can find an attack that is almost as strong as um, as the Oracle attack. And this is indeed uh, more or less what we, what we observe. First of all, we can observe that the models that are most robust, so convex T, the red line, and Excitus 12 training with our recipe, the blue line, are those with a smaller relative difference. And as um, and so we measure this relative difference every 10 epochs, so uh, throughout the whole training, and we measure it for one, two, five, and 10 steps. And we can see that this trend is consistent across the whole training and across this range of attack steps. And even more interesting, interestingly, we observe that uh, excited self trained train with a canonical recipe ends up having an extremely higher uh, relative difference suggesting that it's uh, it, it's actually pretty hard to find strong adversarial examples when training the model with a canonical recipe. So um, so once again, it's, it's really important to make sure that when we train a model, it's easy to find adversarial examples with few steps. Again, this may sound counterintuitive, but that will mean that our model will have found will have already seen strong adversarial examples at a training time. And so when we will evaluate it, at, um, at test time with a stronger attack, the model will already be robust to them. So to recap um, what we have found in this work, first of all, we have seen that visual performers can indeed have strong performance uh, when adversarial is trained. However, it's important when using new architectures uh, and adversarial training to, to find a good recipe so that um, the final results are uh, optimal and uh, um, and can give uh, and, and are indeed competitive. Uh, second, we have seen that our recipe actually uh, generalizes to other variants of, this, of the architecture for which we have found the recipe, but it also generalizes to different, even though quite similar um, architectures and also another threat model. And, and finally, we have also investigated a one potential reason for why the recipe is so important. And this reason has to do with the fact that um, a better recipe enables finding stronger adversarial examples with few steps. Uh, that will that means that once we will uh, attack our model at test time with a stronger attack, the model will be already robust to these uh, to these examples. Um, that's it for for the presentation, and thank you for your attention.